Hickok 45 here. Is that pretty? I think it's really pretty. It might be too pretty to shoot. What do you think? I don't think so. Let's do it. Let's shoot the thing. How about that? <laughs> yeah. You can't stop me. Even the stop sign couldn't stop me. It's just too pretty. Smith & Wesson 686. Nice combination in my uh, purdy leather holster. I think this is a Diamond D Custom out of Alaska. Let me feel. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Came from Alaska. I mean, that's pretty. You got to admit. Steel, wood, leather. Hard to beat. Of course, sometimes you can't beat polymer, aluminum, and nylon either. That works too, right? <laughs> so I'm glad you came by. We're doing chapter two of this revolver. How'd you guess? You probably read the uh, title. Well, let's just shoot it one more time. How's that? How about some magnums? Ooh, federal premium. Let's put some in there. These are 357 magnums. I want to jar my brain right here at the beginning. Let's jar the cowboy. How's that? Woo! That jarred him. <laughs> Get my ears in. Let's jar this watermelon. Oh, I hit him high. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> How about, oh, there's a two liter sitting right. Woohoo! It's empty, right? That was, had one more. All right. So, 357 Magnum, very versatile little firearm. I shot 38 specials the first go round. So, I'll come by and keep my Magnum and 38s here separate. Uh, for a chapter two of this, because, you know, mainly we just shoot the things in chapter two. We've talked about it in the first video. And, uh, a firearm like this just needs to be shot. You know, this really is essentially my four inch python. And you know, if you've been following us, you know I was thinking about a, a four inch uh, new python, 2020 python. Well, they're not very available yet. And uh, I, I realized I wasn't gonna find one probably anytime soon. And I sort of developed a desire for a nice four inch 357 <laughs> Magnum. And I found this one. It's a 686-1, made in the 80s, and you had combat grips. Magnum, yeah, combat grips they're called, I think. And I just took the plunge on it, and I really like it. And as you recall, let's shoot some more Magnums. I, uh, I, the only thing I might have complained about in the first video, I'll link to it, because I don't remember what I complained about. Who can remember all their complaints, right? All their bashings and uh, compliments either was the trigger it was just really too light yeah really it was almost uh, dangerously light i that was my opinion and uh whoop, about fell off the uh blacktop the edge here all right what should i shoot? let's just shoot the gong how about that let's magnemize the gong if i can where do i hold y'all remember yeah right there i guess <laughs> Are there. Let's try the buffalo. Y'all remember where to hold there? Ooh, that worked. And that worked. Woo! How about on this two liter? Where should I hold my sights? That's what I'm talking about. Now, whenever I say where should I hold, some of you new people may not know what I'm talking about. Boom. Boom. <laughs> That means where do I align my sights in order to hit the target in the middle or wherever I want to hit it, right? So, uh, pretty cool. It's hard to beat a 357 Magnum. You've heard me preach on them a lot. If you don't have a revolver and you're thinking about one, it's a good place to start. Unless you are dead set on a, uh, like a Western style, Colt clone, uh, Peacemaker, Colt single action type, you know, firearm, okay? Unless you want a single action. Well, I mean, you can get 357 in that as well. But, uh, you know, but but then again, 44, 45 Colt are pretty inviting, you know, and those sorts of, of firearms. But, uh, yeah, good old double action, 357, hard to beat. Now, the trigger is not as light as it was. It has magically improved to where it's perfect, okay? Still a nice, light Smith & Wesson trigger, but not dangerously light i put it in the freezer for three days fixed it anybody believe that 
better not have because that's not what happened. <laughs> I took it to a gunsmith, a very competent gunsmith, Jeff Wally, Guns and Leather, been a friend of mine for a long, long time. And uh, I told him, oh, well, I, I let him look at it and, and test it. I said, am I crazy? Does this seem a little too light? I said, it seems like maybe somebody has some uh, amateur like me has been working on it or something. And he agreed. Yeah, it was too light. Okay. And so he got it just, just perfect. And uh, that's, that's what you want. You don't want it too light. Uh, I was telling John, it reminds me of the Seiko rifle I got recently that has a set trigger. And if you have ever had a rifle with a set trigger, whether it's a muzzle loader or anything, once you set the trigger, it's designed to, to be that way. Once you pull the rear trigger or you click it or whatever you do to get it set, then if you breathe on that trigger, it, it goes off. But at least you know that's what's going to happen. I don't want a revolver with that light of trigger, you know, one pound trigger or whatever it was. So it's good. Got my gun now. So now I'm totally happy with it and uh, I like it. Can I shoot it some more? <laughs> hey, I really do like it. Uh, uh, you know, this is such a shootable firearm. I've been shooting going back and forth with uh, 38 Special here and 357 Magnum. So I, I may have some dirt rings in there that give me a little trouble. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, a lot of people make a little too big a deal about that. I might have talked about that. If you shoot 38 Special, here we go. I will invoice you for this information. I'll charge you for this. Say so these two cases are a little different length. Just look at the case. Well, I could just use cases. Gonna. A 38 special case is a little shorter than the 357 Magnum. That's a better example. And so you can imagine uh, when this thing goes off, there's a ring, you know, at the end of this, the blast in that chamber and dirt and everything is going to be right there, especially. Uh, and so you develop a little bit of a ring of carbon and, and dirt there. So with the 38 special, you're creating that little ring a little bit further back in the chamber and then when you put in a longer case 357 uh which is not these then it's got to get past that with the case and all that so but it generally takes a fair amount of shooting for that to be a problem uh i'll often uh just shoot my 357 stuff first and then maybe shoot some 38s or just depends not a problem oh let's put a 38 slug on the gong see if you can tell the difference do you remember it's about i know it's been a long time probably three minutes since I shot it with a 357. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer for this one to get there. <laughs> you can't really tell unless I hit it, can you? And to hold a little bit higher. Not as powerful. It's a 38 Special. See if I can hit it. Yeah. So you notice it took a little longer for the bullet to get there. But now, being a physics teacher, professor at Vanderbilt for so long I also know that did it I'll ask you did it take longer it took longer for the bullet to get there did it take longer for the sound to get back to us when I'm shooting 38 special that's a quiz for you all right let's hit it again I think I'm empty no I'm not now <laughs> So the answer to the question, students, is, of course not. The sound travels the same speed, doesn't matter what kind of bullet, how much power and all that that hit the target, right? Always messing with you people, but that's what you pay me for. So, yeah, I'm shooting both, and I'll go back to Magnums now and see how that works. So maybe I'm dispelling the myth a little bit here. Yeah. And sometimes you'll have a revolver, you know, these magnums are going in just fine. Now, some, it depends on your ammo and how dirty it is and all that, and your firearm and how tight your chambers are, you know, so. And sometimes, I don't know if you all have noticed when you shoot your revolvers, you shoot every, every chamber the same number of times, but one will just uh, stick a little more. The brass seems a little harder to extract from that one and, or even to put the cartridge in as it gets dirtier. And it could be that one chamber is a little tighter. Could be you just didn't clean that chamber as well the last time you fired the, the gun, right? Got one more to bowl with? Yeah. <laughs> People ask me quite often about shooting double action. Why are you shooting that firearm single action? It's a double action. I've talked about that maybe, but you know, you just 
they have such a nice single action trigger uh, just because you have double action capability doesn't mean you always shoot at double action uh, i guess with me i tend to depending on the uh power of the ammo i'm shooting and of the firearm and all that if i'm shooting some pretty warm stuff i tend not to shoot at double action as much uh, i mean it, it hurts a little more for some reason it's the way you grasp it to fire double action you get a little more felt recoil put it that way i'll shoot these magnums double action though okay how about a double action on the gong Click. Uh, so, you know, they shoot just fine, shoots fine, double action. It just, I don't know, roughs you up a little bit more, generally speaking. So that's a beautiful gun. I just wanted to bring it out, shoot it again, and invite you all along. I'll, I'll shoot another round here, maybe, but uh, a, a favorite firearm. As I've said before, you never know what's going to become your favorite firearm, your carry gun, no matter what you. Some people do get stuck in history, and we all have that tendency. Well, I've always carried this, or this has always been my favorite gun. Don't want to look at a new one. I don't want to think about a different type. And, uh, you know, I, we're all, you know, uh, have tendencies, right, in that, that direction. But, yeah, as I've confessed before, I, I just continually find firearms that I like as well or better, whether it's for a carry gun or just a fun rifle, shotgun. You know, I, I, I pull out my carry gun it's very likely something I've owned for like one year and I've been carrying for 30 years uh, you know not that I'm a hipster and I keep switching around for something cooler and, and never never satisfied necessarily but there's just a lot of interesting firearms being made and uh, they're getting them smaller and, and uh, with good capacity that shoot well and feel great in the hand you know like the P365 or the Glock 43X and just some of the others are whatever and of course the old standby still work great with a uh, Glock 19 a CZ 75 MP uh, shield all those guns are just great uh, 642 revolver Smith and Wesson uh, a lot of the old standbys just work great a 1911 and whatever size you prefer one of these a 357 Magnum in a L frame a K frame uh, J frame yeah it's available in J frame even smaller frame or if you prefer to carry an X frame, <laughs> let's load him up. But anyway, you know, there's there's just a lot of cool guns out there. Uh, you can't own them all, right? Shoot them all, but uh, just uh, you know, don't get too close-minded. You might be missing out on something really fun, really fun. And again, a revolver, so simple in design, very clear when it's loaded, when it's not. Slide the the bullets, the cartridges right there into the cylinder, close it up, and you can fire it in a double action like this by pulling the trigger or by cocking it and pulling the trigger. And again, for new people, once you cock it, it's a very light trigger, okay? All right, we got six more we're gonna shoot, so what should we shoot? Let's finish off the two liters. <sighs> and let's not waste any of these bullets by missing okay so far so good let's put one on the tree here knock one of these limbs around all right how about a bowling pin <laughs> uh gotta confess i was not shooting at that one i was shooting at the one below it i missed it and i shook the post okay now i feel better because I didn't take credit for that. <laughs> and I think I have two more. Let's put, I have one or two more. Let's put them on the gong. There we go. Finished with a hit. So glad y'all came out this beautiful evening and helped me enjoy one of my favorite revolvers. Again, haven't had all that long but it's a favorite. I had a six inch version of this back in the eighties. And uh, you know, this is just nice four inch, an old model 686. I'll link to the first video on it. Now I do have the 686 plus, the three inch you've seen for quite a while. Nice, nice little pistol. 
Uh, this is probably my preference. Uh, doesn't have the key lock and all that stupid stuff on it. You know, it's got the hammer mounted firing pin. This is more of a vintage classic Smith that I, I prefer. I grew up with Smiths that looked like this, built like this, uh, pretty much. Uh, so I like it a lot. And I, I'm just extremely pleased that you came out and uh, enjoyed it with me this evening. Uh, so uh, 357 Magnum and Revolver, uh, they provide a lot of fun and they could provide you with protection. You know, it's a very effective cartridge, very flexible, 38 Special, 38 Special Plus P, 38 or 357 Magnum, you know, lots of, uh, lots of power factors that you could uh, experiment with there and, and enjoy. So. Y'all come back sometime, and uh, I'll be happy to have you. Yeah, life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall, talongungrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastall, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So, Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.